am I gonna win some money if I eat all this? <laughs> if, if, what kind of money am I gonna win? Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Derek Lewis. He's a top contender in the UFC's heavyweight division, and there's not a single fighter in the weight class's history with more knockouts on the resume. And he's celebrated for his sound bites almost as much as his power. Will he keep his pants on today? If the sauces get too hot, I guess only time will tell. Derek Lewis, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. See, that was pretty good. You did pretty good. Oh, way better than me. Yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that. And you know, Texas boys, they've traditionally done really well on this show. How are you around spicy stuff? I love spicy food. My wife already knows that once I start eating spicy stuff, she already knows to get the, the baby wipes ready. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be some screaming in the bathroom, but I, I like it though. It's already on there? It's already on there. Man, we should have switched place then. D will you want to switch? Nah, it's all right. You already touched it. Uh, there you go. <laughs> so this one? Yep, that one right there. We're always interested in how a fighter gets their start in this rose growing in the concrete profession of MMA. And then I know that you started off training as a boxer, but saw a faster, more direct route to making money through MMA. They're obviously both very hard ways to make a living, but what did you see as more difficult about the boxing journey? Um, the boxing journey is like, it seemed like you gotta train a lot more. You gotta do a lot more cardio and running and stuff like that. I'm not with all that. <laughs> I'm not with that. Um, so MMA to me is like, mostly like street fighting. So it's like you can do everything you want instead of pulling hair and hitting in the nuts. So I'm down with that. And then I oftentimes talk to fighters, especially early on, about shady promoters or managers. What's a lesson about signing contracts or getting paid up front that you had to learn the hard way? I miss a lot of shady um, managers out there, and there's a lot of shady promoters. I mean, some promoters, um, you got to watch in the contract that some of them only will pay you $1 then pay you cash afterwards. You know, IRS don't like all that, so you gotta be careful with that stuff like that. And there's a lot of promoters, or managers out there as well that was try to screw the fighter over and try to take all the sponsorship money and don't even tell the fighter that he's being sponsored by someone. Oh, they probably talking about me. I'm sound out of eat chicken wing, right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Tyson once put the art of the knockout into words by saying, it's hitting them with punches they don't see. Does that ring true to you, and how would you define the art of the KO? To me, it's like, especially knocking out another grown man, it's like one of the best feelings in the world. You ever did it before? No, I, I, you, I don't know you if have you can tell try. that by you looking at me. You have to try it. It's a great feeling. You know, I, I love it. It's addicting. And then why did you say that your favorite striking technique is head kicks? Um, head kicks is like something that I like to do to um, loosen up, get my nerves out. And they never see it coming from a guy my size, so I like doing it. And then what has been the most satisfying knockout of your career? Most satisfying knockout of my career probably was against Curtis Blaze. Blaze been talking trash for three years straight. Like, no matter if I win or lose, he'll be in my DMs or making public it known that he don't like me, like my style, whatever. And so, it was so sweet. <laughs> That's good. You know, I think uh, because you're like a Texas barbecue guy, there's like a little sort of like barbecue with that, with a little honey. It's kind of like a mm -hmm. fall October festy kind of sauce. That's good. So before being convinced to pursue a career in MMA, I understand that you worked as a tow truck driver. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you're someone who can handle themselves in tense situations. But what is the most heated confrontation you've ever had with someone when you're towing their car away? Probably the most heated thing it was because we also, with AAA, we also like um, pop locks, like they lock the keys in the car. 
so I was like bending the glass back so I could unlock the car. It's like a PT Cruiser um, drop top. And they thought I was going to break the glass. And I was just telling them, nah, I got this. I know what I'm doing. And so they were just really like making sure everything is OK with their car. Like I said, nothing ain't wrong. It's PT Cruiser. Nothing ain't wrong with this thing. This thing's already broken before you brought it. <laughs> and they said, oh, you being an asshole. I said, nah, I'm serious. There's nothing wrong with the car. I got this. Whenever I was tow truck driver, I really didn't care how I grabbed your car. So <laughs> if you wasn't around watching me, I don't care how. I'm pretty sure your car was all messed up if you wasn't around. <laughs> so. Anything that got low in it, I already know it's going to be hot. Hopefully we can. I should have grabbed your plate and you grab mine. Well, you know, the rest, I'm open to that, by the way. I'm very, I'm open to the to the switcheroo if you want to do that. You just let me know. All right. I'll bite one and you bite one. All right, well, no, no, alternate. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> so I've noticed that you're one of the few huge UFC draws that doesn't overly engage in petty trash talk. Is that just a coincidence or do you think you approach the fight game a little bit differently than the others? I approach it differently. Most of them guys trying to be the best fighters in the world and stuff like that. I don't care about being the best fighter in the world. All I care is about is to check. As long as they pay me good, I'm down to fight whoever. Is there a rule change that you'd like to see implemented? I'm um, probably like the fight week doing all the interviews because most of the reporters keep asking the same question. Like they all see the articles and stuff like that, but they still want to get their turn to ask the same question. I hate doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this wing is kind of spicy. We can go on to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. But this one and this one so far is pretty good. All right, Derek, we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more oh, context. Oh. Which. Oh, not from our page, right? From your page. And let me tell you, what a roller coaster that was. I don't know where you get your memes, but you have quite the collection. Are there any any good follows that you can recommend for our viewers? Of course, Lil Duval. You gotta follow Lil Duval. He's pretty funny. <laughs> well, let's check out more of the conventional, more of the classic Derek Lewis pictures. We'll pull them up on the monitor. What's the best thing about being a Texans fan, and what's the worst thing about being a Texans fan? I guess the best thing is that they treat you good whenever you go to the games and stuff like that. Whenever we lose, a lot of guys get off the bandwagon saying that everybody need to be fired. But that's the only thing I don't like about it is just wishy-washy. Yeah, but not you. I'm not, no. no. And then uh, you threw out that first pitch at an Astros game. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, yeah, the wings are good. <laughs> um, yeah, so, yeah, well, let's try this one. <laughs> no. Yeah, what happened was I was wearing jeans. As soon as I was getting ready to throw it, a mosquito bit me. Everybody <laughs> knows mosquitoes are bad in Texas, so. It'll throw that pitch off. Nothing to be ashamed of there. Yeah, and there was a guy yesterday playing at Yankees, I think he was, from Los Angeles, something maybe. I seen on the top 10 this morning that he did the same type of pitch. So, you know, we, I could be a major league, and it's just <laughs> one mistake. You know? And then one last one for you. What do you remember about meeting Dave Chappelle at UFC 264? Yeah, he's a cool dude. I, I thought he was taller than than what he was. You know, I thought he was taller than me whenever I seen him on TV. And he loved his cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, man. Look at it. Right, let me see. Let me see. Same color. Actually, right. I think if anything, I got more color. So back in 2018, you announced an open invite for people chirping you online to come to the <laughs> gym for a fight. Did you have anybody take you up on that offer? And if so, what were some of the highlights of the afternoon? Oh, I had a couple of guys. And I knocked three guys out that week. So it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. Made sure they signed the waivers just like y'all had me do. Same type of paperwork, same. Signed the waivers, and it was a lot of fun. It was a guy came on his birthday, 41 years old. I didn't care. He brought his wife and his daughter to the gym. His daughter and his wife were videoing. Knocked him out with a head kick in the first few seconds. 
His daughter started laughing. <laughs> his <laughs> wife said, ooh. <laughs> and I said, let me see that video. And his wife said, no, I already deleted it. But I seen the video <laughs> from his daughter's room, and she sent it to the coach. And start watching us. Oh like, yeah, that's what he get. I said it's his birthday. He said he we didn't he didn't know we was doing kicking. I said, what do you mean? You kicked me in my leg twice. He said, nah, we need to do that again. I said, nah, man, it's your birthday. No. <laughs> Yeah, my coach didn't like that, though. So he, was, he was worried that they was going to sue him. Yeah, that one was good. Whoa. It's a pretty spicy sauce when someone's like, that's good, with a poker face. I'm just... No, it's a good flavor to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's spicy, but it's a good flavor. So you're very vocal about your love for your hometown of Houston, not the least of which when it comes to the food offerings. Do you have a go-to order at Mike's Seafood? Anything you order at Mike's Seafood is good. Anything, I promise you. You go there, anything you order, don't matter what it is. I don't even like oysters. But there. But there. They smell better, but I'd have never tried them. They smell better. I'm sure they're good. <laughs> I don't like oysters, but I'm sure they're good. What is the turkey leg hut? It's the place... A restaurant that serves big turkey legs that you grab the bone and the meat just fall off the bone. It's pretty good. They put all kind of um, spices on it, um, like rice. Um, I believe they do macaroni and cheese, too. They put it on top of it. Lobster, I believe, and crawfish. They oh, put it yeah. on top of the um, turkey leg. It's pretty good. You drink water or no? You know, it's okay. Yeah, I think I'll go in too. So this next one is the bomb beyond insanity. Thing about with spicy food, you can't let it touch your lips. All right, because you get the burn. You get the burn. The, the burn. That's what makes you want to quit. But you know, not today. It's good. Whoa. Okay. Now, then again. (coughs) (coughs) Yeah. That one's a little different. Yeah, I did that on purpose on that one. Like some wine, you know, you got swishing around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (sighs) That one's crazy. (coughs) That one's crazy. I think it's making it worse now. Yeah. So when we had T Pain on the show, I know. (laughs) Just chill for a second. This man told me some tea pain. Yeah, ain't hurting you? No, it is. It is. All it right. Is. Let's take our time for a second. Sure, sure. Let's slow it down. <laughs> and then just be careful around your eyes. You know, if you sweat around your eyes, you'll want to do that. But don't do that because you'll have spice on you. Oh, y'all got extra. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have uh, fully stocked lifelines over there. <clears throat> but y'all ain't had the AC on, though. No, no. It's, it gets very hot in here, actually. Okay. T-Pain, you say? T-Pain. When he was on the show, he talked about the downside of owning luxury imports. What's the biggest pain in the ass thing about being a Lamborghini owner? I guess right now because of COVID, the what, shops in Italy is closed down right now. Am I going to win some money if I eat all this? <laughs> if I, what kind of money am I going to win? If I ain't going to win no money, we could stop right now. Dom, how much you got on you? Dom, how much is in the wallet? I'll tell you, EBT. <clears throat> what are your thoughts on electric or self-driving cars? Like, could you ever park a Tesla between two of your lifted trucks? Yeah, I just brought a Model X. Yeah, I like the um, electric cars. And I was looking into the Porsche um, Taycan. Those are pretty good, too. 
So you mean to tell me these next two right here are higher than that? So here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I think that if you can get past this sauce, you can get past any sauce in the world. This has been in our lineup since the beginning of time because it's such a show-stopping sauce. Mm -hmm. You know, you were cruising along, mm -hmm. just no mm -hmm. problem, no problem, no problem. The bomb, it's always just a hard roadblock. And the dude over there, he probably like, yeah, we got his ass now. <laughs> yeah, he just wait. They've oh, seen some good. shit. They've seen some shit in here. Oh. I got big lips too, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if you're supposed to put this on your lips, but... Try it out. If it works. So if I bump up tomorrow, I know it came from this. That might have helped a little bit, actually. You might be onto something here. So in addition to excelling in contact sports like MMA, obviously, and then football, which I know that you played in college, you also keep the competitive juices flowing with the occasional round of golf. What drew you to the sport, and then what's the part of your game that you think needs the most improvement? It drew me to the golf sport because <laughs> everyone always say that I'm rich, and so I said, okay, I'm <laughs> something what rich people do then. So I started playing golf, and I love it. I love golf. It's competitive, you know. Doesn't matter how long you've been golfing, everybody still sucks every now and then. So I feel right on in. Do you have a 19th hole tradition? Probably just take some shots. Take shots afterwards. There you go. So what are you doing? You don't have to oh, if you I'm don't not. want to. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> you probably was hell in school, huh? Like the peer pressure and all that? No, no. And guys don't want to try shrooms. And you're like, come on, man. Come on. <laughs> It'll come be all right. Yeah, They're not yeah. that strong. They're not that strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, come on, man. You can't go wrong. But. I don't even taste like chicken <laughs> but thankfully Derek we're out of the spice woods that's it that's it and just one more question till we release you to a cryotherapy session you've been a highly requested guest on hot ones ever since delivering that memorable post fight sound bite my balls was hot after taking on the wings of death today can you describe in as much detail as possible what's going on through your mind and body I actually did want to take my, my shorts off, <laughs> especially with that last two. But I ain't mean, I know what type of show this is, or what rated R, or, you know, I didn't want to do anything like that, though. But I can't even open my mouth. Well, you know what, Derek? This show, it's whatever you want it to be. And today, you took on the wings of death and conquered. And now, Derek Lewis, there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you. This camera, this camera, this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. <coughs> well, I opened up a um, beauty salon a few months ago called Beauty Marks. Um, we're going to be open up one. We're going to try to open up one every year every year until i retire so that's the goal and i also got a um, hot shot company going that's um that's doing pretty good i have a um, few trucks now and everything's doing pretty good in my life right now well i like to hear that great job Derek. great job I eat at um, Firehouse, too, and they have house houses like this. Yeah, do you ever go crazy like that? Or is yeah, this... I try out of 10. Yeah? I have, yeah. How does that compare to, like, this? Oh, this is there. <laughs> right. What is up, Cam Fam? Tis I, Vampire Guy Bill, for another Heat and His Hot Ones unboxing video. Let's see what's inside. Ooh, a sticker! Perfect for decorating one's coffin! <laughs> and what's this? Hot One's classic blue label! 
Charlotte Fresno edition, now with 10 ha 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 times more garlic. I can't do this. I can't do this. Can we cut? I can't do this. Do you see the problem with me doing this? Uh, sound guy, do you see the problem? I'm a vampire and it's garlic. You can do this, vampire guy, Bill. You can do this. Hey, that's delicious. Hot One's classic garlic Fresno sauce. So good, even a vampire will try it. Only at Heatonist.com.